This lesson is part two of exponent properties. Our objective for the day is to simplify expressions with negative bases, as well as to evaluate expressions without a calculator. So we're gonna begin here. I'm gonna do five problems with you and have you guys work on six through 10 and pause the video to check with the key. All right, in number one, we're finding the product of two and four to the third. Now I want to just keep the two here and evaluate four to the third, four to the third is 64. So I'm finding 2 times 64, which gives me 128, okay? Now in number 2, I have um, the product of 3 and negative 4 squared. So here, I'm going to keep that 3. Negative 4 squared, though, turns into a positive 16. And after I simplify here, I end up with positive 48. So I have problems below that will look pretty similar um, that I would like you to try um, after I go through each one of these questions. All right, now number three, this is the same as the product of five multiplied by negative three cubed, which is negative 27. I have a negative taken to an odd, so this should be a negative overall. So five times negative 27. Now this is not, definitely not something that you need to have memorized, but um, you should be able to multiply this without a calculator. So seven times five is 35, two times five is 13, and we end up with 135. Stick the negative sign out in front, and you're done. In number four, um, here we have negative two to the fifth power. Now negative two to the fifth power is gonna be negative 32. So we have negative 32 with a negative on the outside, which overall leaves me with positive 32. Um, in number five, negative three to the fourth power is a positive three to the fourth. So we have positive three to the fourth with a negative on the outside. Now you can simplify three to the fourth that's 81 with a negative sign out in front, so negative 81 is my final answer there. I'd like you to pause, try 6 through 10 on your own, and then check with the key. For uh, <clears throat> the next few here, we want to make sure we have no negative exponents. So here in this first problem, I'm going to look and I have 5 times 3. I just simply find the product there. And x to the negative 7th and x to the negative 4th both of these need to move to the basement. So we're gonna move these unhappy exponents down below into the denominator. We have 15 over x to the sixth. So there's my final answer. I have no negative exponents here. In number 12, I have seven um, times x to the negative 10th power, if I distribute here, multiplied by five times x to the positive 12th power. So here, these two uh, negatives end up actually being a positive. So the only exponent that needs to move is going to be x to the negative 10th. So I'm going to move um, this to the denominator here. So I now have 7 times 5 in the numerator left, which is 35. And that x to the 12th will stay in the numerator, but the x to the 10th will move down below. And if I simplify here, I have 35x squared. In number 13, I would simplify the inside of this fraction. Now here we have um, exponents that are fractions. Um, this is called a rational exponent. We're going to talk more about that uh, in the next video, but uh, for now, all I want you guys to do is remember your rule. Now, all I have to do um, when I raise this to this 4 to the 5th is first, I'm going to work on simplifying the inside of this. Well, 5 over 15, that's just a fraction. 5 divided by 15 is 1 third, so I'm simplifying the inside. And here I have two um, exponents here with the same base. So x to the 2 fifths over x to the 1 third is similar to x to the 5th over x to the 3rd. You simply subtract the exponents. So here we're going to subtract our exponents even though they're fractions. So we have 2 fifths minus 1 third. We're going to find a common denominator here, which is 15. So this is the same as 6 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths. So I'm left with 1 fifteenth. So this is x to the 1 fifteenth. And then we're going to raise everything to the 4 fifths. So now when I raise everything to the 4 fifths power, I have 1 to the 4 fifths power, which is actually still just 1. So I'm going to leave the 1 out, but um, x to the 1 fifth, 1 fifteenth multiplied by 4 fifteenths gives me 4 seventy fifths. So 1 15th multiplied by 4 fifths, I multiply those exponents here to give me 4 70 fifths. And finally in the denominator, I'm left with 3 to the 4 fifths. 
Okay. Um, in number 14, this looks a little bit goofy, but um, all we have to do is make sure that we move our exponents here. So I now have 9a to the 4th minus 4a to the 3rd. Now some people will try to simplify this, but this does not equal 5a. In fact, um, this is like having, you know, 10x squared minus 10x cubed. You can't simplify these, so you can't combine them. You can't do anything with that because they are not like terms. So this is actually your final answer here. All right, now for 15 through 18, um, these look like they're really tough to do without a calculator, but you're going to be able to evaluate these just using your basic exponent properties. So in number 15 here, we are evaluating 2 to the 458th power over 2 to the 455th power. Well, this is simply subtracting these exponents because we have the same base, so we're left with 2 to the third power. That's pretty straightforward, right? Well, that rule is still applied in number 16, but you cannot simplify here first before you evaluate the numerator and the denominator um, and simplify those exponents. So here the rule would be to multiply first before we're able to subtract. So you want to follow order of operations here as well. So I'm going to multiply 414 times 7. So this is something that you wouldn't use a calculator for, but you can really do this pretty quickly if you multiply here. So I have 4 times 7 is 28. We're carrying the 2 here. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 2 is 9. And then 7 times 4 is uh, 28. So we have 3 to the 2,898th power over, in this case it's pretty easy, 290 times 10 is just 2,900, so 3 to the 2,900th power. And then from here we're simply going to subtract exponents. Now in this case I end up with 3 to the negative second power, which is the same as 1 over 3 to the second power because we don't want to have our answer with negative exponents. So really this is ending up as 1 ninth. Now, one way to also look at this so that you avoid the subtraction here and the negative exponents is think about if I were to expand this, you know, and write this out, I'd have 2,898 of these threes written up top, right? And then I'd have 2,900 of the threes written in the denominator. Well, normally what we do is we just cancel, you know, um, the factors here, 3 over 3, is going to cancel each other out, well you're going to have exactly two more threes in the denominator than you would in the numerator, so that's why you're left with one ninth. So our answer here is simply one ninth. Alright, I'm going to erase here, we're going to work on 17. Um, in problem 17, what you're going to do is actually think of this as two separate fractions, so this is the same as 2 over 2 multiplied by 4 to this power times 4 to this power. You can actually um, think of this as the product of two separate uh, fractions, so that makes it a little bit easier. Well, 2 over 2 is going to factor, or completely cancel. So really, we're just looking at 4 to this power over 4 to this power, and you're going to subtract here. So we're left with 4 to the second power, which is simply 16. In number 18, let's use our rules here. We have 16 over 12. Well, I know that these don't have the exact same base, but I can simplify 16 over 12 to 4 thirds. And then here with the 5s, um, I have exactly 3 more on top than I have on the bottom. So this is going to cancel and be 4 to the 3rd times 5 to the 3rd after I subtract those exponents. And then I'm going to just evaluate from here. So in the numerator, I have 4 times 125. So 125 times 4. Think of this as $1.25 multiplied by 4. So you have $5, or 500, divided by 3, and there's my final answer. All right, that's the end of the lesson for part 2 of exponent properties. We're going to get a lot more practice with this over the next two days, so that you are ready to work with rational exponents.